Chicago Fourth Street School consisted of skipping, not wanting to be in school, and trying to avoid fighting, um, getting in trouble, lying to my mom a lot. I mean, I just wasn't really a good path going for me, you know what I mean, so. I was getting bullied every single day, and I don't know what happened. Literally, it's just like one day I woke up, went to school, and everybody hated me. I don't know what it was, but, you know, I learned growing up, people will hate you for how you look, the people, you know, who you associate with, and I, I never seen that as a problem being younger, but one day I just came to school, and everyone just, all the girls at least, you know, because I had some friends that were like, why? Like, what, what is everybody's problem with you, Spin? And I had some guys that would even be like, yo, Spin, like, if you need to sit with anybody today, you can sit with us. Because it kind of got really bad to the point where, like, everybody kind of knew, like, either Spin's a punk or Spin's getting bored. I was in seventh grade, I think, two times, and then eighth grade, three times. They made me repeat eighth grade three times because I was a fighter. I tried to keep to it myself as much as possible. I tried to be friendly with everybody, you know, and try to just be a cool guy. But I mean, there's some people who just didn't like me because I was me, you know. And if I wouldn't have graduated eighth grade, I would have dropped out and just went and got my GED flat out because I wasn't gonna continue to be in the same grade for a fourth year. Yeah. Uh, the counselors here. Uh, Jenny is the best. I mean, I love Jenny. She's like a second mother to me, you know what I mean? I feel very comfortable to ask her anything. Um, she, she's very, she's a very welcoming person, you know, she's not gonna judge you or anything like that, of course. I'm sure all the other counselors are like that as well, but, you know, I haven't talked to the other counselors like I've talked to my counselor, but I talk to Jenny about a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm really open with her. There was this one occasion when my dad had got arrested and he was going to be incarcerated and I didn't really know how I felt about that, you know, because of course he got himself in that situation so I didn't want to feel sorry for him. Um, I didn't know if I should talk to him or not. I didn't know if I should, you know, send him letters or, you know, just try to try to talk to him because he has messed up a lot in his life. So, you know, that's hurt me, you know, so I didn't know if I should uh, welcome him back and let him know that, you know, I'm still here for him and I still love him and stuff. Or I didn't, you know, didn't know if I shouldn't talk to him because, you know, that's his fault. But, you know, she helped me out with that. She really talked to me about that and she told me, you know what I mean, you should always forgive your, your father, you know what I mean, always, you know what I mean, love him. I'm, not that I don't love him, I love him with all my heart, but it's just certain things that he's done to me, you know what I mean, it's just, not, I don't know, I just, <laughs> um, my dad hasn't always been the best person, and I understand that, and she helped me understand that, and no matter what he does, you know what I mean, I'm always going to accept him, he's always going to be my dad, so. I feel like, you know what I mean, if, if it wasn't for Jenny, I don't know if I would still have a relationship with him. So, I'm really thankful for that. It was early in the morning. I remember my grandma waking me up saying, are you hungry? And I was like, yeah. She was like, you kind of slept all day, which I had. And she was just like, well, let's go on a drive to get you something to eat. And we went to Wendy's. We're coming back from Wendy's and she's just like, do you know what happened with your mom? And at this point, I'm kind of worried, like, well, is she dead? Is she hurt? And she's just like, I was waiting to tell you, but you haven't seen your mom all week because she's in jail and she's gonna be there for a long time. And all I could think is like, you know, I just, I just seen my mom, I just seen her a week ago, and now you're telling me that I'm not gonna see her for a very long time? Why didn't she tell me bye? Like, you know, there's all these things going through my head, like, you, you just up and leave me? You just, I don't know. Thinking about it, it's hard because it's like, dang, like, I just remember being so confused and not having any answers for my confusion, just being very confused. And then from that, getting angry, just being very angry, feeling like I was kind of abandoned. 
you're so confused, you're so angry, you're falling under depression, but you're only, you're so young, you don't even know how to deal with it, you don't even know what it is. I mean, the thing is, is we've never really, like, the last house that we've actually had, like my family have actually had, has been five years. So, I mean, I've just really been couch surfing from, from friends to family. I mean, I've been back and forth between my grandparents and Austin's and then a few other places, but I don't have much. I mean, anything I need, God will give me, you know, so, I mean, but I seen my grandma's house because, like, we went and stayed at my deceased grandma's house for a uh, few days. It was me and my mom and bacon. And this house has been empty for about nine years or so after my papa died and everything like that. And it's just, the house is trash. Trash. I mean, it it's horrible. Like, and it's ridiculous. I mean, because that house really should have been given to us. You know, I mean, but just the way, because my papa didn't write a will or anything, it just went to next of kin, which was his sister. So it's just, it's different seeing that house like it was because it was so filled with just, it was a beautiful house. I mean, just everything. And then just seeing the way it was destroyed is, The first thing that I can say that street school has done for me is they've taught me a lot about like getting a job and stuff. Jason, the uh, internship teacher, he taught me how to fill out a resume, um, job application and stuff like that. Before I came here, I didn't know any of this stuff, so he really helped me with that. Um, I really enjoy the family and consumer science class with Kim because she taught me a lot about relationships and how to, you know, what I mean, properly treat a woman, how to. You know what I mean? Just hold down a steady relationship without, you know, being abusive or anything like that. Not saying I was abusive before, but, you know, she just taught me a lot about that. I would like to thank Street School for giving me the education that I really needed. I feel like without Street School, I would definitely wouldn't have succeeded. I would have definitely dropped out in the ninth grade. I mean, I started fresh here. It makes me motivated to get up every morning to think that I'm going to come to Street School. I, you know, I, I get here and, you know, I see my friends every day and everything and it's just a lot better. Like, I just feel really good about this school. I feel really motivated to be here. This school loves you back to life. It's because a lot of us come here dead. We're, you know, we've tried it. We've tried it. We have, we've given it our all and it still hasn't worked. It still hasn't worked. So you come here and you're really kind of thinking it's going to be the same, you know? Just because they have this structure doesn't mean it's any different than the other structures I've been to. But here it was just like, I don't know, you came, you just come here and you feel it. You're like, it's going to be different. And all you have to do is give it time. And that's exactly what I did. I gave it time. They put clothes on my back food in my stomach, so um, another thing, they've, they've, they've helped me like begin to express myself and understand how I feel and be able to be okay with who I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm a lot different. I mean, before I came here, I was, I was a serious person. I had, I could say I had a hatred for people. I guess you could say, just in my heart. And I just, I felt like I was alone, you know? And I don't feel that way anymore. Like, I feel like I can actually be myself and I can actually, I can talk to people, you know? I mean, before, I could never talk on camera like this. I was just, I was a shell, you know? That was never wanted to be open because just the life I lived, I just didn't, I mean, it's not even just the life I lived. I mean, but I just didn't like people. And now that I've been here, it's just, it's just so easy to be myself and not have to worry about anything, you know, like, cause there's no judgment here whatsoever. I mean, and they all, they're always trying to help you better yourself. And that's, that's all it is, is trying to help you better yourself, you know? And 
and I'm grateful for everybody here and everything that street school has done for me. I mean, I, I've changed a lot, and I know that for sure. This was my last resort, and surprisingly, my last resort worked. I didn't have a plan A or a plan B for a reason, because I was hoping this was it, and this was it. And just without all the love, like I said, love, like, that's the main key that we all, us teenagers, we need that, because we're angry, we don't even know why we're angry, we're confused, we don't even know what we're confused about, but we need to be loved. I wanna get out and make a difference in the world because street school's made a difference for me and I, I need to pay it for it. And I need to keep on going and I need to help other people out just like I was helped out by other people. So I think whenever I leave here, doors are gonna open wide. <laughs> the Golden Gate Bridge is there. I'm coming through. So I'm ready, I'm, I'm prepared for the world. I just hope the world's prepared for me because it's going down. <laughs> It's going down.